Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Luke chapter 22. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along word for word. Verse by verse at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Keep me accountable. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Please, please be a Berean and search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. This is not for your entertainment. Okay? Get the scriptures. Be a Berean. Follow me along. Okay? Luke chapter 22, verses 31 on to verse 34 to start. Hmm. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When thou art converted. Do you mean Peter, Shimon, wasn't converted, wasn't saved at this point? Oh, no, he wasn't. He wasn't converted. He wasn't. And when you look at verse 31, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, we have to remember this about our adversaries and our adversaries who are in league with Lucifer, who are hidden in Lucifer's loin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That this is a trait that is associated with those who are of the devil. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And then is it and is it any wonder that his ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness? Well, Revelation chapter 12, verses 9 on to verse 11. Hmm. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The accuser of the brethren. And he accuses people before God day and night. 24 hours a day. When he's not busy, excuse me, when he's not busy in Rome uh, doing what he's doing. Because you got to remember about Satan. He himself is not omnipresent. He cannot be in ten places at once. He Okay, he can. He We're going to look at this. He walks to and fro. Okay? All right? His ministers, his uh, angels, if as you were, you know, as it were, excuse me, uh, they're around, yes, and they get word back to him. But Satan is not omnipresent. He is not omnipotent. Okay, you got to remember that about our adversary. Okay. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, this is for the dispensation known as the time of Jacob's trouble. But... Verse 10, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The accuser of the brethren. And that is a trait that is indicative 
to those who work for Satan, who are in league with Satan, hidden in Lucifer's loin. <laughs> yes, yes, who are in league with the Vatican, who are coadjutors, and people who attack the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ. Okay, that is a undeniable and unmistakable trait of those who are not of the Church of the Living God. They are constantly accusing people. God, that's all they do. That's all they do. Okay? Some of you devils out there, you know, if you want to put on the uh, uh, suspension of disbelief, then you want to try to fool people that you're actually saved, you ought to once in a while try making, try to do something other than accuse people. Okay? <laughs> because that's all they do. That's all they do. That's all they do. Their existence is there to make, to, to cause some to fall. They will not rest unless they cause some to fall. Okay? That's the, that's the point of them. Okay? But let's go to Job. Okay? Job. Look at how the accuser of our brethren works. Okay? Go to Job chapter 1. When you're talking about this, about that scoundrel Satan and all his uh, ministers of righteousness. Job chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 11. Now, uh, you know what? We got to, we got to, for context, we got to uh, read verses 6 on to verse 11 in Job chapter 1. Now, there was a day when the sons of God, angels, uh, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Yes, see, Satan is not omnipresent. He is not, um, he's not omnipresent, okay? He is the little G-God of this world, okay? But he can't be in ten places at one time like the Lord can, okay? He's not God. Okay. He is worshipped as God by the lost and so many of these coadjutors, absolutely, but he is not God. He has to go and report to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, So let's continue. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh, whence cometh thou? Look at this. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Going to and fro. Okay? I personally believe that Lucifer, Satan, that old dragon, that old serpent, the dragon, okay? I personally believe he's in Rome. That's, I personally believe that, okay? That's where I think he is. But he walks to and fro. He can't be in Chicago, okay? He can't be in Leeds, okay? He can't be in Norway. He can't be in Brussels, okay? He can't be in Canada, Okay, <laughs> and he definitely, <laughs> he, he definitely um, <laughs> can't be in uh, more than one place at the same time. Okay, you got to remember that. got to remember that. There are so many out there who will say things like, the devil tempted me. Uh, no, no, no. A devil whispered into your ear and just worked off of what was already there. Okay? All right? Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. you got to remember that. But let's continue. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and ensueth evil? <laughs> I, I often, when you come to this, I often will say this. The Lord himself gave that testimony of Job. The Lord himself gave that testimony of Job. Wow. Huh? Think about that. Wow. The Lord himself called Job, what, a perfect an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Wow. Wow. You talk about having credentials, as it were. Let's continue. Then the accuser of the brethren, who accuses the brethren night and day. Okay? And you can see this 
This trait right here in these so-called Christians that attack the church of the living God, the body of Christ. That's all they do. Okay? You shall know them by their fruits. That's all they do. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou, hast not thou made a hedge about him? And about his house? And about all that he hath on every side? Satan's like, well, yeah, look at, of course he is. Look at how you protect him to him. Look at how you've blessed him. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance has increased in the land. Satan is like, yeah, of course he's, of course he's, you're going to say that about him. Look at what you've done for him. Verse 11. But, yeah, God said, but, it's a big but. Put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And we got to read verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Now look at this. Satan is limited unto what he can do unto those, unto those whom belong unto the Lord. Okay? Satan is limited unto what he can do unto those who belong unto the Lord. Okay? And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And then you would read in one fell swoop, one after another, one, two, three, four. Satan takes away everything. Almost. Almost everything. His livelihood, his income, his family, his children. Okay? but the accuser of the brethren. And Job chapter 2, Job chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6, for context. And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, You know, if we get to, you know, if we get at the judgment seat of Christ, well done, good and faithful servant. Praise the Lord. But look again, this 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 testimony that the Lord gives of Job. Mm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And there are some out there who think that God is saying that of them personally, as if they are as righteous as Job was. Mm. Yeah. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Boy, my email is going nuts all of a sudden. Isn't that something? Distractions, yeah. So the Lord said, okay, <laughs> although, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. There was no cause. There was no cause. Hmm. Hmm, isn't that something? Isn't that something? Why? Because look at what the Lord said of Job. A perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil. And the accuser of the brethren? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. He said, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You let me take all his stuff. Okay, you, you're right about that. You're right. But see, you didn't let me touch him. Hmm? There are those out there who would sacrifice everything just so that they could go on living. And see, that type of mentality shows where they stand. Because this is your best life now. Okay? We of the church of the living God, you can go ahead and take my stuff. And go ahead and take my life. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right? 
like a, again, like a dear sister of ours that is waiting for us had said, why do we cling with this grip to this life that we have down here when we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? And see, that's Satan's accusation against Job. Okay? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Skin for skin, yeah. Yeah. You, you let me take away his stuff. But now let's let's make it real personal. Let's touch his health. Let's see, let's see how faithful he is to you if you let me do this. Verse 5. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Hmm. Go back to Luke chapter 22 now. So see, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, Strengthen thy brethren. And verse 33. We're in Luke chapter 22 again, obviously. And he said unto him, Peter, who at this time, his bone and his flesh, what was, was that which was more predominant? Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. <laughs> go to holy place again. Go to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. The bravada statement of Peter. <laughs> Look at that. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Matthew chapter 26 Verses 33 on to verse 35. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will, yet will I never be offended. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> Verily I say unto thee, That this night before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And look at this again. Look at this again. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. So the Lord says, Peter, <laughs> you'd think so, Peter. I don't think it was like that. I think it was like, Peter, Shimon, you're going to deny me three times tonight. No, I'm not. Okay. Whatever you say, Peter. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And back in Luke chapter 22, let's look at verse 34. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And of course, let's go to Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, 29 on to verse 31. Mark chapter 14, verses 29 on to verse 31. But Peter said unto him, Oh, although all shall be offended, yet will not I. <laughs> and Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently. Yeah, right? If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. I'm sure. Now let, let's be fair to our boy, our brother Peter here. Let's be fair to him. I'm sure that at the time he said that, I'm sure that he, in his heart, was fully prepared 
and was willing to do to do that. I'm sure that his intention when he said that was, I'll never, no, what, 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 what? But wait till he was tested. But when he was tested, see, see, it's, uh, one, one second. Like I said, I'm sure that at the time that Peter said that, I mean, let's be fair to Peter. I'm sure he meant it. And I'm sure at that moment, at that very moment, you know, and remember, when the guys came to pick up the Lord Jesus Christ, what did he do? He took out a sword and cut off the ear of Malchus, right? See, he was showing, look at this, and cut off his ear. That was flesh. That was a fleshly action. Okay? That's what that was. And what did the Lord say? You know, Peter, put your sword away. Those who live by the sword are going to die by the sword. Put this, put your sword away. Okay? Peter, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when the guys came, he made, he took action in the flesh. Okay? But, see, that, that wasn't his, that wasn't how he was tried. Okay? That's not how he was sifted. That was flesh. Okay? That was flesh. Um, remember uh, Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Okay? Verse 26. <laughs> Proverbs 28, verse 26. <laughs> he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And you got to remember at this time, our Lord said to Peter, verse 32 in Luke 22, and when thou art converted, Peter wasn't converted. He wasn't saved at this time. And you see his action in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he draws the sword and cuts off Malchus's ear. A move of flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Not carnal, not fleshly. He made a he move he did a movement of the flesh. Okay? He did a movement of the flesh. But note how we looked that so said they all. No, we're, no one's gonna deny thee. But see, it's prophesied in scripture. Go to Zechariah chapter 13. Zechariah chapter 13. One verse, one verse, there are those of you, uh, my brethren and sisters, uh, who know what, what we're going to look at. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, shall be scattered, excuse me. And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And of course, and that's exactly what happened. Prophecy was fulfilled with that. When they took the Lord and all the disciples, the, the apostles and whatnot, uh, Judas, he, he went away, but the rest of them all were scattered from him when they took him. Okay, Prophecy of uh, scripture fulfilled in that again. Okay, it was prophesied that when they took Jesus, that his people said, though, you know, so said they all. No, we're not going to deny thee. We're not going to abandon thee, Lord. They all said that. Peter, of course, the most vehement. It's like, ha, 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 ha. And like I said, being fair to Peter, I'm sure that in his heart, I'm sure at that very moment, he felt invincible. I'm sure at that very moment he intended. And see, again, when they came to take Jesus, you know, <laughs> took it upon himself in the flesh. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay? All right, you got to remember that, dear brethren. And that's in second, uh, uh, second, uh, Excuse me, 2 Corinthians? That's in 2 Corinthians. 
Second Corinthians, I believe that is Second Corinthians. Oh, where is that? One second. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 on to verse 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that, is, that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And let's read verse 6. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Okay? All right? Casting down, for the weapon of our war, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Strongholds. Do you realize that flesh is a stronghold? And when Peter, like I said, the stronghold of his flesh, he operated at that time. He operated in the sphere of flesh like all the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ do. They all operate in that sphere. It's all fleshly. It's all fleshly. Look at the multitude of channels some of these guys have. It's all a fleshly work. Flesh is what drives them. They operate out of flesh. Okay? They operate out of the sphere of flesh. Okay? All right? Now go to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 again. Matthew chapter 26. Two verses. Matthew chapter 26. Verses 40 on to verse 41. Now in the garden of Gethsemane. Okay? Again. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And saith unto Peter, What? <laughs> Could ye not watch with me one hour? Remember what Peter said. Though all the world should deny thee, yet not I. I'll never. Takes out his sword. And, you know. and the Lord's like, What? What? <laughs> Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. But the flesh is weak. Go to John. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 61 on to verse 63. Hmm. And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? And put that in context with what happened at the Last Supper. Lord says on to Shimon, Peter, you know, uh, you're going to deny me three times. And what does uh, Peter do? It's like, no, I'm not. Now think about that. Think about that. Peter, he, he was offended. Think about it. The Lord whom he loved, the Lord whom he said he would go to prison with and die for, said to him, uh, you're not converted, Peter. You're going to deny me before the cock crow twice, okay? You're going to deny me today, tonight. And he's like, I'm not. What did he do to the Lord? He's saying, Lord, that's not true. Was he accusing the Lord of lying? Think about it. The Lord said he was going to do something. And Peter said, no, I'm not. Was Peter being malicious in his actions? No. But what was he operating out of? 
flesh. And of course, when the Lord points it out to you that this is not what you're supposed to rely on like the devils do, does this offend you? <laughs> what and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hmm. And these ministers that operate out of the flesh, such as the one fine young man who tells people that they have to go back under the law and keep the law today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff like that. A minister of Satan is a minister of the flesh. And they are ministers of righteousness because they exalt the flesh. Don't forget that, brethren. Don't, especially in these last months of this year, you're going to see. You're going to see these ministers of the flesh in all their glory. <laughs> but doth this offend you? And obviously offended Peter. Now go back to Matthew chapter 26. Go back to Matthew chapter 26. See, the Lord knew it all along, too. The Lord knew what was going to happen. The Lord knew, number one, that Peter was not converted. Number two, the Lord knew that what he was exactly going to do. Matthew chapter 26 again, verse 69 on to verse 74. Now if they come and get Jesus, the sheep are scattered. But remember Peter, cut off the guy's ear. Though all will deny that yet not I. Operating out of the sphere of flesh. Now look at what, what happened. Now Peter sat without in the palace. He followed along. Remember, he went there too. Okay. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth, of Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all. Was more concerned about public opinion at that time saying, I know not what thou sayest. I don't know what you're talking about. Verse 71. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him. Interesting that <laughs> a damsel and a maid. Isn't it interesting that uh, Lucifer used, I hate to say it like this, isn't it interesting that uh, Lucifer used a woman? Isn't it interesting? And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were, his, were with, and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And he denied with an oath. With an oath. Wow. I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech, look at this, thy speech bereath thee. See, when you come to Jesus on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon the name of the Lord and he save you. Okay? See, the devil and his adversaries, and uh, the devil and the adversaries, excuse me, they will know that you have been with Jesus. Okay? That's a distinguishing thing of us. Why? Because our speech berayeth us. We do not talk. We do not speak like the world speaks. Okay? Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Don't worry. We're going to look at that. Okay? Thank you, brother, too, for bringing that up. But, okay? We, we do not speak as the world speaks. Why? Because we have been with Jesus. 
Remember when the, uh, Peter and James, I believe it was, were brought before the, the council guys and they, they saw that uh, they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they knew that they had been with Jesus? Okay? See, when you spend time with the Lord in the Word, the authorized version of scriptures, that does something to you. Okay? But see, at this time, again, Peter was not converted. But yet he was with Jesus. Okay? For thy speech be with thee. Now, obviously, he had an accent as you, as you were, as it were, yes. But, you know, it's a little bit deeper than that, as we just went over, okay? Now, look at this, okay? Surely thou are also art one of them, for thy speech be with thee, associated with Jesus. And look what he does. Verse 74. Then began he to curse and to swear using profanity. See? Blah, 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 blah. I'm not like that. See? Blah, 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 blah. I talk like one of you. For thy speech be with thee. Then began he to curse and swear. Curse and swear using profanity. See, I'm no different than you. See, I use cursing and swearing just like you. Then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. So see, there were witnesses that saw him with Jesus. And his speech berated them. Yes, he was a Galilean. Yes, he had an accent, as it were. Yes, but the point is, Later in the book of Acts, and you can look that up yourself, they take note of them that they had been with Jesus. And, you know, when, when you're with the Lord, <laughs> in the Word, the Scriptures, it changes your speech. Okay? All right? Those who claim to be these Christians and still can't control their tongue, we all slip. Absolutely. I've told you many a times, one time I dropped a couch on my favorite toe, blood went all over, and I shouted at the top of my lungs, an F-bomb. And that hurt worse than my throbbing, pulsating, bloody toe that was bleeding like a stuck pig, okay? We all have moments where we slip. Except Mr. Smiley David Daniels from Chick Publications. <laughs> that guy's a little too nice to be trusted. That's just me. His work that he's done on the Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, very good, spot on, absolutely. But I don't trust a guy that doesn't show any temper or only shows temper to those who are actually truly saved of the Church of the Living God. <laughs> yeah, but never, never, never mind about that. Never mind about that, okay? But see, when we are with the Lord, it changes us. He changes us. We do not change him, God forbid. Yeah. If, if that were the case, why serve him if we change him? Yeah. Yeah. Then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. See, I'm just like you. I talk like you. I, I don't know this guy. Remember, he swore. He more or less called the Lord a liar, didn't he? Come on. Come on. Oh, you Catholics, this is burning you up, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he did, more or less. The Lord said, you're going to do this. And he said, no, I'm not. Okay? Remember, being fair to Peter in his heart, no, I don't think he was intending to... Uh, to do, you know, to deny him. But see, the garden, when he drew out the sword, that wasn't, that wasn't the testing. This was. This was. Then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. Let's, let's really, let's really get kicked today. Hi. Let's really get kicked today. Luke 22, verses 61 on to verse 62. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Saved over 14 years. 
that still, that right there, still can bring a tear to my eye. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. I've mentioned this, uh, this to you before, but you got to understand, do you understand the gravity of this? And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Have you ever been there? Hmm? Well, you're so perfect, right? You've been saved for years and years and years and years, and years right? And you, you don't mess up at all, huh? Have you ever been here? Hmm, brother? Sister? The Lord lets you know that you're going to do something. And it's like, I'm not going to do that. I'd, 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 I'd never do that. And in your heart, you at the moment, sure. But what happens when your feet are put to the fire? Hey, like Peter, here comes the guys. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna, uh, ha, ha, ha. F working out of flesh. Working out of flesh. But see, what, what happened with Peter when he was warming himself at the fire and the people were coming? Hmm. It was a different aspect. That was the testing. The sifting, as it were. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Have you ever had that bitter weeping? Was he bitter at the Lord? God forbid, no. At himself. At himself, brother. At himself. See, God knows everything. God knows everything, okay? He does. God knows the beginning from the end, okay? God knows it all. God it lives outside of our time, uh, of our time frame here. He lives outside of that. Time is not, a thousand years are like a day to our Lord. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what you're going to do today before you even, before the, the thought even appears in your mind. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow, if you have a tomorrow. Only he knows. Okay? And knowing the end from the beginning, the Lord said unto Peter, you're going to deny me. And what did Peter do? More or less said that the Lord was lying. You can try to sugarcoat that all you want. Let's be, let's cut the meat off that flank, okay? More or less. Is that not the case? Well, not, shut up. Okay? Go to Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. The Lord knew all along. But who didn't? That'd be Peter. Why? Because he trusted in his heart. He trusted in his heart. And at that time, Peter was not converted. It took an ultimate breaking to show Peter that he can't operate out of that realm of flesh which he was so mighty and what he boasted in. Proverbs 24, verses 15 and 16. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Mm. A just man falleth seven times. And you got to remember, that was right before the crucifixion. The law was still in effect at that time with Peter, okay? The law was still in effect, all right? And under the law, you were just by keeping the law, right? And a just man falleth seven times, riseth up again. 
We're working off that number, seven, here. Seven, the perfect, complete number, the number of rest, the number of completion, okay? The seventh and final dispensation, where no sin is. Eternity, okay? Go to Romans, of course, chapter seven. Because a brother of ours, my best friend, had asked about verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Okay? And a brother uh, of ours had asked, well, what would be the equivalent within the Pauline epistles to this? Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. Peter fell. He didn't fall away, did he, though? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. But he fell. But he rose up again. And there are some of you, dearly beloved, who, if Satan could would keep you beaten down to never rise again. Oh, you know it. And see, that's one of the angles that those who work for Satan and his church, the Vatican, Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, that's one of their things. They want to keep you beaten down. There, there is a certain young man that I am aware of who's messed up. Who the enemies of our Lord to this day are doing all they can to make sure that that young man doesn't rise up again. It, it's, it's very, very sad. And it also shows the pettiness and the fear of the enemies of our Lord. It really does. But, I mean, and that's an astonishing thing to me because this young man, is he's, he's not around. He's not around anymore. But yet, the enemies of our Lord are still, kind of crazy themselves, are still, to this day, doing everything they can to make sure that this young man doesn't rise up again. And not to whatever, but that he stays down, beaten down. See, that's what the devil does. That's what his ministers of so-called righteousness do. They beat you down. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. Romans chapter 7, verses 15 on verse 25. Have you fallen? Have you fallen? And because you've made, oh, you've messed up pretty bad, haven't you? Unless you know you're perfect, you know, perfect, Mr. Smiley, or His Holiness from Maine, you know, these perfect people who never make mistakes, who who rub in your face their perfection. Nah, I don't trust guys like that. Not at all. Not at all. I don't trust someone who wants to keep hidden their faults. I don't trust someone who, when they make a mistake, don't leave it so others can learn from it. I don't trust someone like that. Not at all. Not at all. But Romans chapter 7 Verses 15 on to verse 25. For that which I do, I allow not. Sin. Sin. Okay? For what I, for what I would, for what I would, that do I not. Not sin. But what I hate, sin, that do I. We've talked about this before, but it's meet that we do it today again. Okay? If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Okay? We've talked about this at length before. Okay? The law is good. It shows us what sin is. So that we can get away from it. 
Okay? Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And you got to remember, Paul is not disassociating its, his sin from himself. Sin, what is it? Look at that. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. In me. Not like something that you can, you know, like a, like a piece of dirt or something. It's within us. But see, the Lord is within us. But see, we ourselves are spared, our soul, our house within this. And it's in this sin dwelleth. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. In verse 18, Peter. Peter. <laughs> Look at that. For to will is present with me. Though all deny thee, yet I won't. Right? He had the will. Sure. In his heart, he had the will. Sure. And like, like we said, you know, he cut off Malchus's ear. Bravo! That, that was, he was working out of this. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. And there are those out there today who actually, actually preach and teach that today you can be sinlessly perfect and don't sin anymore. <laughs> and you know, these, these wicked, easy believers and heretics um, who, uh, who justify sin because God's grace covers it all. It doesn't affect their salvation. But even they are quick to pounce on these guys who talk about sinless perfection today. Even they are, okay? And easy believism, heretic devils are one of the worst that we encounter nowadays, okay? But even they, against these imbecilic, um, I don't sin anymore. You just haven't been saying, oh, shut up. Go take a long walk off of a short pier, man, woman, okay? What about Paul? Huh? I guess I guess he just wasn't truly really saved, right? I guess he didn't just have the right amount of faith. Uh, I guess he didn't get it through his thick head that he wasn't a sinner anymore. Sinless perfection. <laughs> Do you sin? No, I don't sin anymore. You're a liar. Lying's a sin. Go away. Go away. Go away. Anyone come? People. People. People, 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 brethren, brethren, you know this, but people, if someone comes to you talking about, you you know, got to stop sinning, don't sin anymore, uh, go tell it to, go tell them politely, uh, blow it out your rear end, go away, go away, go away, okay. Verse 20, now if I do that, I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Why? Because our spirit and soul are in this. Yeah. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, that hidden man of the heart. And isn't it funny, and this, very, very appropriate for stuff that happened earlier today. Um, the hidden man of the heart. Who is that hidden man of the heart? Is it you, you yourself? No, because we already looked at it. If you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. Right? Who is the hidden man of the heart? Oh, that'd be the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That's why well, of a woman that who is of the church of the living God, you know, uh, what is it? Beauty is deceitful and favor is vain. 
But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Right? That's because the hidden man of the heart. And who is the hidden man of the heart? The Lord Jesus Christ. So, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. The inward man. Who is that? The Lord Jesus Christ. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity, into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Flesh. The flesh. Okay? Oh! Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the, serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. He's not condoning sin that it's okay to do sin. Not at all. What is he saying? He is t telling us that, okay, no matter how hard I try, no matter how sanctified I am, I am not like the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? See, the flesh... That Jesus Christ was in. The flesh itself was sinful. But see, Jesus did what no man could do. He kept the law perfectly. Hence, in keeping the law perfectly, his flesh was perfectly sanctified, even though the flesh itself was sinful. Read Romans chapter 8. Okay, the first couple of verses. Okay? All right? All right? That That's... That's, that's kid stuff. That's nuts and bolts. Okay? But see, the devils will go to any length to justify this. Because that's what the devils work out of, the flesh. Don't you? And that's why they're seemingly so strong. That's why Peter is so, though all men, and <laughs> when he was truly tested, he failed. Because he wasn't converted. Now go to Matthew chapter 18. This thing on 7. Okay? Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verses 21 and 22. 21 and 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my... Brother, sin against me. And who is my brother? Who is my brother? Someone who is actually truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Now this is Old Testament. This is Old Testament. We've got to remember that. For our instruction in righteousness, though. This is what we're looking at this. Okay? Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. What, what's, the, what's the thing with this? Go to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Because uh, the devils, some of them when they're cornered, when they're figured out, they'll go to Matthew chapter 18. It's like if my brother trespass against me, blah, 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 blah. Granted, you, you got to remember that's still the Old Testament that's good for instruction and righteousness like that. But see, there's something there that is most often missed. Now Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, verses 3 on to verse 4. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Now you got to remember, this is still doctrinally under the law, okay? Doctrinally under the law. And also, you got to keep in mind that the Lord was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. And in the kingdom of heaven, which is all works, if you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. Okay? That the Lord makes that 
plainly clear, and even these uh, wicked Christians who don't rightly divide the word of truth will point that out. If you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. Uh, that's talking about the kingdom of, of heaven, okay, where it's all works, all works, okay, all works, because you don't need faith when you can see the Lord sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, okay, so in the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive someone, you ain't going to be forgiven. Okay? We have to remember that. But for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? Look at, look at this. Look, look at this. Okay? Now, remember, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Okay? A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. And Romans chapter 7 Verse um, uh, 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do I. Okay? And verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. <laughs> oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Okay? Go back to Luke chapter 17. Okay? Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Okay? There, I remember a uh, devil, you know, quoted something to me uh, at uh, Matthew chapter 18, but never repented. <laughs> never repented. You know? If, you know, and how is this for us today um, for our instruction in righteousness? You got to remember the kingdom of heaven was being offered where if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. You got to remember that. And this was still under the law, faith and works. Okay. Faith and works. All right. It was a different dynamic because it was a different dispensation. Okay. Today. Today, whether or not you forgive someone does not in any way affect your salvation. Don't believe the lies that these people who do not rightly divide the word of truth tell you if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. That's not true for today. Okay, that's not true for today. No, that's for the kingdom of heaven. Okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. All right. What happens, though, if you don't forgive someone, it's going to mess you up. Okay? If you don't let it go. Now, that doesn't mean that you're all buddy-buddy with them again. We're going to talk, we'll get ahead on this in a second. But, you know, if you don't forgive someone, okay, it's not going to affect your salvation. But what, it's going to affect so many other things. You'll walk because you'll be bitter. You'll be angry. You'll have that festering in you. Number two, you're going to make the Lord look bad because you're going to be harboring a grudge. And some people, these like the Jesuits, the Jesuits never forgive or forsake. Okay? That's devilish. It, it's not a requirement for your salvation at all. No, it isn't. But see, it affects other things that in effect are going to affect you personally, physically, spiritually. Okay? It's not a good thing to harbor a grudge. That doesn't mean that you welcome them back with lovey-dovey arms. That usually when things, when flesh gets in the way and brethren butt heads, usually what happens about nine times out of ten, that fellowship is forever altered and broken. There's no going back. Okay? You forgive them. But you don't let them back into wishy-gushy kind of things. Okay? But in context to the Lord here, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And we are the church of the living God. Let's be, let's be honest with each other. Be honest with yourself. There are days where I sin at least seven times a day. Lord, I shouldn't have done that. I, I'm sorry. I repent. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> why do I do that? Oh, wretched man that I am, right? 
But see, contrition, godly sorrow. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I repent. Okay? And we who are of the church of the living God, sealed until the day of redemption, we can't lose what is not our what what is not ours. Salvation. It is not of us. It is God's gift by grace through our faith. Okay? We can't lose that. We can lose his blessings. We can lose our peace. We can lose our health. We can lose our testimony. Oh, we can lose a lot of things, but we don't lose our salvation. And if the Lord says here, for our instruction in righteousness, if your brother, if you got a brother who uh, sins against you and he repents, forgive him. Okay? Forgive him. If he repents. If they don't repent, then treat him as a publican and a heathen man. It's like, okay, man, look, look, there's this problem here. Okay, you sinned against me or I sinned against you. Okay, whatever it is. If I sinned against a brother, I'm going to go to them and it's like, look, brother, I'm sorry. I, hey, I did that with some people who I don't talk to anymore. Okay, uh, there's the one guy um, who I sent an email to. It's like, look, I sinned against you and I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, we don't talk to each other. Okay, we don't. But I, rep I repented to him and he, you know who you are if you watch this. Okay, I repented. Okay, because I was in the wrong. It's like, look, I'm sorry. I repent. Please forgive me. Okay? And another brother that you, we used to have a uh, conversation with, um, I offended him. And it's like, look, brother, I'm, I'm sorry that I offended you. I don't repent of what I have taught, but if I offended you, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I repent. That's what we do. But see, what happens is people, the fellowship doesn't come back more often than not. More often than not. It, it can you know, but when it can, it can, that is a possibility. But more often than not, the fellowship is altered. But see, in context to the Lord, aren't you glad that you are sealed into the day of redemption? Aren't you glad, praise the Lord, that his word is true and that we are once saved, always saved? Because if, if it wasn't as the word says, then... If you sin, you lose your salvation. See, that's the deadly danger of people who teach you that you got to keep the law today. Because what happens when you sin? Oh, you got to go get saved again, right? No, we're once saved, always saved. And when we sin, we repent. And if we repent from a repentant heart, truly a remorseful and <laughs> doing what we can to make sure that we don't do that again. But like Paul, but like Paul, you know, the will is ready, but the flesh is weak. See, and that's what Paul was talking about. That's what Paul was talking about. He's like, okay, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to sin. I know that. I know that. And that's what he was talking about. Okay, that's what he was talking about in Romans chapter 7, verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. What he is talking about is like, look, okay, I know what the Lord, uh, I know what is right because I have the scriptures. And I am working, you know, studying to show myself approved unto God, that I be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I'm trying to abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay? But the flesh gets in the way. And no matter how hard we try, we're going to sin. We're going to sin. That doesn't make it okay. But see, you could, uh, this is with babes too. When you sin and you're aware of it as a babe, it could be devastating to you. It could be a failure like Peter, where Satan can come in. It's like, ah, see, see, you, you're saved, huh? But look at you, you sinned. And they be, he beat you down. They beat you down. And then you go to a devil. And it's like, ah, you sin. Oh, you got to be careful. 
You're not once saved, always saved, like the scriptures say. No, no, you got to get saved again. You know, and they go to Hebrews and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, that's a tactic of Satan's ministers to beat you down, to keep you oppressed, to subvert you. To subvert you. Okay? And the New Testament for us, go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, okay? Verses 29 on to verse 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, and the Lord is that Spirit, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved, boy. So when you sin, you grieve the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. But see, like Paul was telling us, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? We know because we have the scriptures and the Lord is in us. But see, it's not, it's not a thing at gunpoint. It's not a thing at gunpoint. Okay, We're going to sin. It's not okay that we sin, but see, if someone sins just one time and they don't recognize, it's like, okay, I'm going to tr do what I can to abstain from all appearance of evil, but I got to know no matter how hard I try, I'm going to fall short. I'm going to sin. Praise the Lord for his mercy and death forever. Okay? Because if you couldn't sin, if you could somehow miraculously stop sinning, then you would be sinlessly perfect like the Lord. Yeah. Think about that. When you run into someone and say, well, I don't sin anymore, so you're sinlessly perfect like the Lord is. So you're another God, huh? Get, get away from me. You filth. You filth. You lie. You filth saying that you're sinlessly perfect like God himself. Who you think you are? You know, I don't sin anymore, so you're God, huh? Let all bitterness, all bitterness, which comes from harboring and not forgiving. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, clamorous pots clinking together, okay? And evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another in context to those who are of the church of the living God, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Guess what, dear friend? Unless you come to the Lord on his terms, you're not forgiven. See, there are heretics out there It's like, everybody's forgiven. No. No, everybody is not forgiven. The Lord's forgiveness is at Calgary. The cross. The way that he chose. The called way that he chose. You want forgiveness, you got to go to him, his way, the way of the cross, death to self. Okay? It's there for everyone. Yes, it is. But not everybody has it. Not everybody has it, okay? It's there for you to, it's there to be had, but not everybody has it. So in context, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you, who are forgiven? Those who come to the Lord on his terms. And he saves us by his grace through our faith. Okay, we are forgiven. And the blood of Jesus Christ washes away all our sins. Those who come to the Lord on his terms are those who, for, who are forgiven. You who boot the door out of the way and just believe without any repentance or contrition or fear of the Lord, who are all against calling on the name of the Lord and it's a work and blah, 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 blah. You don't have forgiveness. You're earning your way to heaven by keeping the law. You don't have forgiveness. Okay? And Colossians. Chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 15. 
put on therefore as the elect of God. You're the elect of God, of Jew and Gentile, if you go the elected way of the cross. Comprende? Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now there the context is a little different. Okay? There it is. And Ephesians, total context is just, you know, in, the, in context to the church of the living God. But, verse 13, forbearing one another, you know, those of the church of the living God, my brother and sister, okay? You know, there are certain things that I do that annoy my brethren, but they're like, that. That's one of Brad's little things, okay? He's my brother. I love him. And that little thing he does. Like, I have a problem, uh, pronunciation problems sometimes, as you have seen, okay? And uh, with uh, some, some people that really, it's like, ah, Brad! I understand, okay? And also, you know, that's uh, we're to love one another and forgive one another as the Church of the Living God. But what about someone who isn't of the Church of the Living God? Okay? Forbearing one another, forgiving and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, hmm, if any man have a quarrel against any, against any, okay, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. That now, like I said, I believe that can work both ways. If a lost person has wronged you, why not rather take wrong? Why do you not suffer to be defrauded? It's like, I'm not, going, I'm not going to ruin my walk with the Lord to harbor resentment against you, a lost person who has sinned against me and done something wicked to me. I'm not going to, because see, if you harbor that and don't let it go, no, it's not going to affect your salvation. Not at all your walk, your testimony, your mind. You, you can't get over it because you keep coming back to that thing. You got to let go. Now, see, like I said, that doesn't mean, okay, that doesn't mean that when you forgive someone that, oh, oh we're just going to be buddy. No, 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 no. No. It's like, hey, uh, with some brethren, it's like, hey, brother, I forgive you, but you and I don't, we're not like-minded. You and I are not on the same page. I believe you are my brother. I believe you. I believe you are my sister, but we ain't on the same page. It's not that I'm better than you or vice versa. No, we don't think alike. We are not like-minded. Okay? We're not. There's a problem there. I forgive you, but now I'm putting this away. We can't have fellowship anymore. And unfortunately, that's the case with a lot of when this happens. I've been through this quite a bit, quite a bit, okay? You'll have incredible fellowship and then something happens always because of flesh. Flesh is always the culprit. And then it's like, okay, well, that's, that's the end of our fellowship. I forgive you. You're crazy. I forgive you, but we can't have fellowship anymore. And see, in forgiving, it doesn't affect your salvation. But see, like I said, it can affect your walk if you don't forgive. Okay? Because no, uh, let's be real about it. If you of the church and living God want to harbor a resentment against one and not forgive somebody... That's on you. Is it going to affect your salvation? Absolutely not. But your your walk, your life, your testimony is going to be a wreck. It's going to be a shambles. Why? Because you have bitterness. And a root of bitterness spoileth? I've seen that. <laughs> And above all these things, put on charity. Charity, which is self-sacrifice. 
which is the bond of perfectness. Self-sacrifice. For us to forgive people who have wronged us. Self-sacrifice. Absolutely. 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 Now, go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. While we're touching on this, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verses 16 on to verse 21. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Come to Galatians anytime you encounter someone like that vile messenger guy. Okay? Who says you got your just? Who who teaches you are justified by the law? Who oh no, you're justified justified by faith. Yeah, but what he teaches doesn't match that at all. Okay, never mind about that. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. God forbid. Okay. By grace, through faith. Okay? By his grace, unmerited favor upon us. The better, blessing the lesser. Okay? Through our faith. Okay? Through our faith. Alright? But if we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. It is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. And right here. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Doesn't say loves. Loved. Okay? I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Absolutely. Absolutely. And go to John chapter 2. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, we want verses 23 on to verse 25. John, not Luke bread. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verses 23 on to verse 25. And see, God knows all men. God knows everything. God knew what Peter was going to do, like we said a little earlier, okay? God knew what Peter was going to do. God knows the beginning from the end. He knows everything. Satan doesn't, okay? John chapter 3, uh, John chapter 2, verses 23 on to verse 25. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them. Why? Because he knew all men. And he did not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. We already touched on that in uh, Romans chapter 7 about what is in man. What is in man? And you read in Genesis that um, man at his heart is always evil. That's why the scriptures say those who trust in their heart is a fool. The scriptures never tell you to follow your heart. Never. Never. That's satanic. Go to Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. There are those out there who say that God doesn't know everything. <laughs> that our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, doesn't know how certain what you're going to do or how you're going to react. And they go to Abraham. <laughs> And they go, yeah, they do that. They they go to they point to Abraham about that. 
don't they? <laughs> and that's, that's, uh, anyway, 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 John, uh, Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 on to verse 13. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Why? Because he knows the future. He knows what you're going to do. See, when he said to Abraham, when he, Abraham was about to, uh, in the description box, there will be a link for the video about God tempting Abraham. Okay. We go over that in that video. Watch that video. We're not going to go over it here. But when when the Lord said, now I know that you, you fear me or whatnot. It wasn't that God didn't know what Abraham was going to do because he said when he appeared to him before he destroyed uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, for I know him. <laughs> I know him and I know that he will order his house after him. Okay. No, the knowing that the Lord said to Abraham in uh, Genesis chapter 22 there is relational relational okay god knows the beginning from the end god knows what you're going to do before you do god knew what peter was going to do god knows you better than you think you know yourself and when the lord allows things to happen when the lord allows satan to do things to you is it that he doesn't know what you're going to do no it's to show you it's to show you it's to show you. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 on to verse 13 again. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. <laughs> yes. Look at verse 9 again. Remember, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I will also do it. And got to also remember what it says in Malachi. See, God doesn't change. What changes is how God deals with man. That's why you got to rightly divide the word of truth. But God himself never changes. The way he deals with us changes as the dispensations. But God himself never changes. Malachi chapter 3, 1 verse, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And these people who do not rightly divide the word of truth, it's like, well, yeah, Jesus Christ, the second person of the satanic trinity, oh, shut up. It's like, Jesus is different than the God of the old. No, no. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. We want verses 5 on to verse 9. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 on to verse 9. Okay? Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, say the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen, brother. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The same yesterday, today, and forever. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not this ridiculous Trinitarian nonsense. Okay, that's, that's wicked. Okay? What changes is how God deals with man. God himself does not change. Oh. 
He's still perfect. He still demands perfection. But see, perfection is in Christ Jesus who dwells within us. We ourselves are never perfect. Christ is who dwells within us, who will never guide us onto sin. Okay? We will sin. We sin every day. Okay? But right here, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Verse 9. Verse 9. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. Brethren. In Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. Verses 4 and 5. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak. Thus saith the Lord. Thus have I said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Hmm. See, and that's the thing. Satan doesn't know. Satan can't read your mind. Satan knows your weaknesses. Satan knows how to get to you. But see, Satan can't read your mind. The Lord knows what... That's why you got to really mind your thoughts, with every pun intended, because the Lord knows what's going on up there in your brain case. You know, remember the Lord said, oh, you look upon a maid and lust for her in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Why? Because what's going through that head of yours when you see a woman dressed like a harlot wearing the sausage wrapper pants and, oh, yeah. You, get, you got to mind your thoughts. See, and God knows what you're thinking. Even you lost devils. The Lord knows all things. And people, if the Lord isn't perfect, if the Lord doesn't know all things, like I said, you might be like, well, what about Abraham? What about Abraham? He said he didn't know. He's talking about a relational thing that he actually had that relational thing. It's not that the Lord didn't know what Abraham was going to do. Okay? The Lord knew what Abraham was going to do. Okay? It was the relational thing. It was the relationship that the Lord, now I know, because he did it. He, he That's relational. Okay, it's not that the Lord didn't know what he was going to do. Like I said, check out the in the description box uh, the video about Abraham, okay? Check it out, all right? Well, we get into depth in it in that video, all right? All right? The Lord knows what you're going to do. The Lord knows how you are going to react. Look at Peter, okay? But yet he still does it. But yet, okay, the Lord knows what's going to happen. He knows what you're going to do before you do. He knows how you're going to react. This past Monday... It was a bad day for me spiritually. I was under spiritual attack that day. You could say. I woke up just uh, spiritually. Health-wise, praise the Lord. Thank you for your prayers, brethren and sisters. Health-wise, I'm improving. Praise the Lord. Okay? Praise the Lord. But spiritually, Monday. Okay? Uh, what was that? Uh, uh, whatever day, day that was. Monday. I was under spiritual attack. Spiritually. Okay, and I sinned on Monday. We sin every day. But yesterday, Tuesday, you know, the Lord just opened up the scriptures to me on so many things, and it's like, wow. And I'm reminded, the Lord knew that past Monday I was going to have a bad day spiritually under an incredible spiritual attack. He knew what I was going to do. He knew what was going to happen. Yet he allowed it to happen. Why? God knows what you're going to do before you do. Okay? And you might be, well, okay, if he knows that I'm going to make this stupid mistake, he knows I'm going to do this, okay, then why, why, why? Why then? Why does he still let me do it? Right? Like he's holding a gun at your head, right? See, if he was forcing you to do something, that would mean you're a robot. That would mean that you have no free will, Mr. Calvinist. Okay? 
But why? Why? Okay. He knows what I'm going to do. He know. He knew. You knew. You knew it all along. Then why? Why did you let me do it? As if it's his fault, right? Right? See, what? What kind of mentality is that? That's a mentality. That's a flesh mentality. That's thinking in terms of flesh. You knew I was going to do this. Then why didn't you do something? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 on verse 29. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many, ooh, how not many wise men after the flesh, and Catholics are wise men after the flesh, uh, as if you haven't figured that out, okay? Not many mighty, not many noble, are called. We have to point out that it says not many. It doesn't say that they are not ever called. you got to remember, wise men after the flesh, mighty and noble, they have it worse than us po folk who are Christ-dependent rather than self-sufficient. Oh yeah, that, that's the heart of this video. We cannot exhaust Christ-dependence against self-sufficiency. We cannot exhaust that subject, never. Especially, especially in the closing months of this year. And base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. And you look at TV, you look online here at these Christians, what is elevated? What gets elevated? Oh, flesh, flesh. Brother so-and-so, he's such a great man of God. Yeah, yeah. What, what was that poor, that poor sot who made that? I'm just, I'm just uh, the trash man of a certain man. Uh, I do his dirty work. Wow, that's quite a telling statement in and of itself. Still pray for you, by the way, too, who said that. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. And base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring, to, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. Think about it. You knew all along that I was going to do this, but yet you let me do it. Why? The woman that thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And unfortunately, even for us who are saved of the church of the living God, that Adamic nature, which is still in this, comes back at us every once in a while, doesn't it? But see, we got to remember that no flesh should glory in his presence. Peter, he, he was flesh, man. He was all flesh. Though all deny thee, yet I. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Yes. Wise men. Mighty and noble. Look at how he responded to Cornelius at first. How the Lord had to drop down a sheet. Saying, rise, Peter, kill and eat. He's like, not so, Lord. Nothing unclean has touched my lips. And the Lord said, that which I have cleansed, call not thou common. Okay? Meaning that us Gentiles are grafted into the tree. Uh, the dietary restrictions are removed in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. You can eat pork today. You don't want to? Go ahead. Knock yourself out. But you can have a pork sandwich today if you want. Praise the Lord, okay? But yeah, that no flesh should glory in his presence. See, the Lord knows what you're going to do, but he will allow things to happen that you may know. That you may know. And you see this in the Old Testament. 
like when the when the Lord brought them out of uh, Egypt, he said, and I will prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. How many of them said, you know, with the song of Moses, hey, we'll, we'll choose the Lord, absolutely. Then their feet are put to the fire. It's like, why have you led us out of Egypt, Moses? Who is the Lord? See, these things are for our benefit that we may know how frail we are, that we do not become dependent on ourselves, that we do not become self-sufficient, but Christ-dependent. And there are one too many of these Christians, especially within the King James Bible-believing Christianity thing, that are way too self-sufficient and operate right here. One too many of them. One too many of them. It's a shame, too. It's a shame. It's a shame. But way too many of these King James Bible-believing Christians operate just in that field, the field of flesh. They worship men. They worship flesh. Absolutely, they, they do, brethren. So the Lord will have things to happen to you to remind you that you're not supposed to trust on yourself. You trust in your own heart, you're a fool. Okay? Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I came... Was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their, their fish stinketh, because there is no water, and dieth for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth, they're covering. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. You might have been going through something recently, and you've fallen and messed up really bad. But if, if you're of the church of the living God, Repent. Go to him. Okay? If he taught people to, if their brother come to them seven times a day and repent, seven times a day forgive them, and you are saved, uh, truly saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, sealed unto the day of redemption, and you've gotten away from the Lord, hmm? he lets you go so you can be reminded that you can't glory in your flesh, that you have to be dependent on Him every moment of the day, you start thinking, oh, brethren, you start thinking that you can lean a little on your own arm of flesh. Yeah. Wait till you test it. Oh, you might survive one, but sooner or later, You'll be brought back down to size. We're being reminded that you're dirt. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. Verses 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Now today, once saved, always saved. But see, when you mess up, that doesn't affect your salvation. That relationship is what is affected. 
And you're going to go to heaven without a relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. You just can utter some things, or you just believe, or you clean up your life first, or you're keeping the commandments, but you have no relationship with the living true God. <laughs> yeah. I know of some brethren who have fallen, done things, they rebuild those things, uh, they build back up those things that they tore down, making themselves transgressors, returning to their vomit, yes. Yes, it happens. But brethren, church of the living God, you got to remember, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Now, as we have already covered, you're going to sin. But when you are choosing, when you choose sin over the Lord in a constant fashion, like this day, I'm, I'm not going to have anything to do with the Lord. I, I'm just going to put everything away. I'm just going to do what I'm going to want to do. Be careful. Oh, it won't affect your salvation. But that relationship, your testimony, your gut, that's going to be affected. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Can, talking on a subject like this, we can't avoid Romans chapter 8. Verses 34, on to the close of the chapter. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Look, if you've messed up, get right with the Lord. Put that stuff away that's messing you up. Go back to the Lord. Repent. Go to Him. Reestablish, you know. You know. You broke, the, you broke the relationship on your end, not him. It's like, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Our fellowship has been messed up because of my fault. And see, that's the thing. That's the thing. You got, you got to take responsibility and accountability for your own actions. You're going to do so at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne of judgment. You can play your little game. Oh, well, he made me do it. You can have, you can live in your Adamic nature all day. It's like, well, it's your fault that I did this. If you didn't do this, then I wouldn't have done that. That's not taking accountability. It's not being responsible. You're going to give an account of yourself. Whether at the judgment seat of Christ for us who get redeemed or at the great white throne. You're not going to get, a, you're not escaping that. You're not getting away from that. Okay? And for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And do you realize that any other creature is also a reference unto yourself? You come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you. You are once saved, always saved. You have the seal of the Holy Ghost. Okay? The Lord is in you. Okay? He ain't going anywhere. He's not, okay? Once saved, always saved. And like I said, watch out for these devils who preach against that, okay? But see, when you get messed up, and the Lord lets you know, he knows what you're going to do. And then he lets you go. And then you do those things. And then you're like, you knew I was going to do this. Why? Why? Why, why, why can you maybe, why can you just let me at least tr slip on a banana peel? Huh? You need to know that no flesh can glory in his presence. 
And how many of these Christians, how many of these King James, mighty, wise, noble, King James Bible-believing Christians are glorying in their flesh? How many of them? I ask you that. You think about that. You think about that. In Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. 13 on verse 17. Hmm. Sing, O heaven. Sing, O heavens. And be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountain. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, Lord, the Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. This is obviously for the church of the living God. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers, that, that, uh, thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. And what is that a reference unto? 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Did you see that? Did you see that? 1 John chapter 2, verses 18, on to verse 20. Let, let's read in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 17 again. Thy children shall make haste, thy destroyers, and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That's that seal of the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Yes, our Lord knows all things. Our Lord knows all things. He knows what you're going to do before you do. Amen. And it's wrong for you, brother, sister, to have this mentality. It's like, well, you knew what I was going to do. Then why did you? You're, you're not taking responsibility. You're not taking accountability. The Lord knew what you were going to do and let you do it so you could know that you can't depend on yourself. That no flesh should glory in his presence. That's why. First John chapter 1. Then we'll be done. 1 John chapter 1. That which we have, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the capital W word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. And he does all this so that we may learn to depend on him, not on we ourselves. Why, brethren? Why? Why is that? That no flesh may glory in his presence. That was something that I had to be reminded of this Monday. And that might be something that some of you are being reminded of right now. Take comfort. Take comfort. And keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Because he is the only, he is whom we are to be dependent upon. Not we ourselves. That is going to be it for this video. I, I, um, I hope this has helped you. Uh, again, a thing about Abraham will be in the description box. Check that out if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. I hope this helps. Um, we love you. Thank you for your prayers. Pray for one another. Be there for one another. Okay? And just thank you, brother. Thank you very much. We love you. And we will see you in the next video.